I'm just going to start now. I see that the number of participants is quite stable. Um, so just to say the webinar will be in English. The um, activities within the IPCCs are, are all in the English language. Um, and so we think it's uh, helpful to, to, to discuss the IPCC in English. And also we have a lot of experts based in Italy who are um, not necessarily Italian nationals. And this webinar is open to anyone who is interested. So just to share information about the IPCC. So we made a very broad invitation. Uh, you're all very welcome. So I am the um, focal point alternate of uh, Italy for the IPCC. And um, I've invited to our call Erika Coppola, who is um, based at the International Center for Theoretical Physics. Monica Salvia at the National Center of Research, CNR, and Valentina Bossetti from the Euro-Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, CMCC. And uh, they have all participated in previous scoping meetings. So Erika and Monica were part of the CITES special report scoping meeting that was held uh, very recently. And Valentina was one of the participants of the scoping meeting of the sixth assessment report. So this, the intention of this webinar is to have a very informal presentation of how this process works. So share some process information, but we now have also a nice situation where you can hear directly from colleagues who have participated in, the, in this kind of meeting. And uh, so I'll present a little bit about what the scoping meeting consists of. Then we can hear from our colleagues, their experience, and if they have some, uh, some uh, insights to share with you, and then we'll open for questions and answers. And you're welcome to put your questions in, also in writing in the question and answer box. So we can try and answer while we go. And just to say this meeting, we held a similar meeting before the city's special report scoping. It was very popular. We had a lot of questions. So if we don't answer all your questions, we will provide a question and answers written after the webinar, as well as the recording. So feel free just to keep asking questions and we will answer them as best we can after the webinar as well. So a very brief introduction uh, to the focal point of Italy. Um, the role of this, uh, this position is to uh, connect this national scientific and policymaking communities within Italy to the IPCC. And uh, there are two of us. So Antonio Navarra is the focal point and since um, a little while recently, I joined as the focal point alternate. So what it means is we attend, for example, the plenary sessions, the intergovernmental sessions and represent Italy. And we also act as this interface. So we're very happy to have conversations with you about the IPCC, establish activities to discuss IPCC activities or products. Um, so. This is one of these such events um, when we'll, do, we'll be doing a lot more. So you're welcome to contact us if you're interested. We have a very nice website, which is uh, maintained by our colleagues at the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change. And uh, I invite you to go and find it. If you haven't seen it already, you can find information about past reports, outreach information. Um, there are also so we say didactic explanations of some key concepts addressed in the IPCC, and you'll find news about these kind of events. There's also an emailing list or a newsletter, and I encourage you to sign up because we will always alert our um, network to new calls for participation in the IPCC. So just to clarify, CMCC provides this service for Italy since 2006 on behalf of the Ministry for the Environment and Energy Security. So to introduce the seventh assessment report, in January, we had a plenary session when the work program of the seventh cycle was decided. So just to remind you what the IPCC will do in this cycle, we already had agreed a special report on climate change and cities, and this will be produced by the end of 2027 and a methodology report on short-lived climate forces produced by end of 2027. We will have, uh, regarding carbon dioxide removal technologies, carbon capture utilization, an expert meeting this summer, and there will be a methodology report produced by 2027. 
And then uh, we'll have the seventh assessment reports and the panel agreed to produce the three working group reports as was done for the AR6. So the physical science basis of climate change, impact adaptation and vulnerability and mitigation of climate change. And one interesting um, dimension of this work program is that there will be a product that revises and updates the technical guidelines that were produced back in 1994 on impact adaptation. And uh, this addresses uh, this will address metrics, indicators, and methodologies of impact and adaptation. And also there will be a synthesis report for the whole cycle. This will produce by the end of 2029 after the working group reports are completed. So we're at the start of the AR7, and very, very quickly, just to explain how this has been set up. We had elections last year when the Bureau was elected. This is the representation of the scientific and technical communities around the world. Um, there are um, about seven or eight representatives per working group, and they essentially oversee the scientific production of the IPCC reports. And they are led by two co-chairs in each of the working groups. So um, just to remind, we obviously had the global stock take last year. And from that, we moved into discussions of the work program. There's a lot that can be discussed regarding that, but the intention here is just to update you on where we are. So we moving on, we had the scoping meetings of the two agreed reports, cities and the methodology on short-lived climate forces. This summer, we will approve the outlines of these reports and the scoping meeting for the three working groups will come out uh, towards the end of 2024 this year and will be approved in early 2025. And obviously, we're thinking always in our work in the IPCC out towards the second global stock take. And you'll also find out that there will be other activities going on in the cycle, expert meetings, workshops and so on. So without going into too much detail of um, the decisions being made in the IPCC plenary, I want to remind you of how reports are produced in the IPCC. So we have a first part, which is around scoping the content of the reports. The panel will approve that outline. And based on that approved outline, nominations for experts and well, authors will be made. Um, the Bureau selects the authors and from there on the work on the report starts. So the report is produced in an iterative manner with different drafts that are produced and reviewed by experts and governments. And then from there, we move into the final stages of the reports when the summary for policymakers is synthesized from the reports and finally approved by governments um, and, and the report is published thereafter. So in this diagram, you see the interface between policy and science and the role of governments and authors is introduced. And we are at this stage of the scoping process. So what is a scoping meeting for the IPCC reports? It's an integral part of the process and the aim is to develop a proposal for the structure and content of the report. So you will see in later slides that this means an indicative outline. There are bullets with topics that will be addressed in the report. There is a structure to the report. And from there, um, we move to an approval session with governments. And uh, it's based on that that we then move to the call for authors. So when scoping a report, there needs to be a very careful balance between a too vague outcome where um, there isn't enough clarity also for the scientific community to engage in and to uh, and also for, for policymakers to understand the content of the reports, but also too prescriptive so that the authors are not locked in to a drafting process. Um, so you'll see later some examples of indicative bullets to see what that means. So the scoping process um, is starting generally with some pre-scoping webinars and the preparation of some documents to introduce the process. And then during the meeting itself, uh, it starts from a high level generally, it often has uh, scene setting presentations, and then a combination of bottom up and top down approaches are addressed over a few days to both brainstorm, to bring in proposals and to consolidate ideas coming from across the groups of participants. So generally working in breakout groups. 
And then uh, there are plenaries that take stock takes of the outcomes of the breakout groups and build consensus at each stage of the meeting, finally reaching a structure and a content, indicative content that everyone agrees to. And throughout the meeting, there are um, the, st the steering committee. In the case of the city's special report, there was a scientific steering committee established. For the working group reports, it is the bureaus themselves that act as the steering committee. They work throughout the meeting to move the process forward. And in the end, the meeting looks a bit like this. It goes from a kind of brainstorming process, identifying cross-cutting themes or cohesive themes, moving in towards possible chapters, and they're working to uh, reconcile, shall we say, how these chapters are structured, both the headings and the content. And finally, a complete outline is produced. So a little bit more detail of what the meeting can look like, um, often moving between breakout groups and plenary sessions and back again until at the end in plenary, there is a consensus built across all participants. So just some images of what this looks like. It's a very interesting and unique meeting. Um, the, there are about say 80 to 100 people coming in to scope the reports. The bureau members and the technical support units work to move the whole process forward. And finally, in plenary, it's not an approval session, but it is important to gain consensus. So at the end, everybody is happy and buys into the report. So um, to iterate the issue of these indicative bullets, it's quite interesting to see an example. So this is an example from the special report on global warming of 1.5. A particular chapter, it had a title, strengthening and implementing the global response to the threat of climate change. And I'm not gonna read them all, but you can read for yourselves the level of detail of these indicative bullets. So each bullet assembles together some key terms and uh, associates them together. So you can get an impression of where this chapter is going. And not only is it important to build a chapter that has a, a, a cohesive and um, useful structure or, or, or conclusion coming out of it potentially. So obviously all the chapters need to fit in in a logical uh, logical way. So it's a intense and difficult process actually to achieve this indicative outline. And the outcomes, as I said before, they are produced, um, they are integrated into a document that has supporting information. And this goes to governments that will approve the outline with the Bureau members in discussion. And from there on, the call for authors will be made. So you've seen the call for nominations for the working group reports. They are um, by working group. There's some very detailed uh, bullet points identifying key areas of expertise. So the three working groups here. And then you'll notice that there are also cross-cutting areas of expertise and um, regional expertise is highlighted. So when you apply, if you're interested in applying to become part of this meeting, you would identify which of these topics you would be bringing your contribution on. And um, if you haven't seen the Excel form that you have to complete, um, they ask for three top, shall we say, your priority publications peer reviewed, but also non peer reviewed if you wish and you provide a CV, a short CV, four pages maximum. And it's very important to, to demonstrate in this nomination form and CV, how you bring a broad understanding of these key priority areas for the scoping meeting. The selection of the participants is undertaken by the bureau members. And um, in actual fact, I have here 8085 experts. This was based on the city special report. For the working groups, it will be more like 100 experts per, um, per working group, probably. And um, the, the, the way the, the selection is made, it's a balance that's achieved between scientific, technical, and socioeconomic expertise, geographical representation, gender balance, but also there's a, an eye on mixing experts who have been uh, previously involved in the IPCC. They are very familiar with the process and what can and cannot be done and how to pro progress from previous reports. But it's very important to have new perspectives in this process. 
And um, there's also increasingly attention to bringing stakeholder, practitioner, um, user groups into the process to really um, bring the solution space into a more active um, component of the assessment. So these criteria are in the principles and procedures of the IPCC. And the, the process to select participants will take um, one, two, probably two months or so. So it's quite a long process. Um, from the city special report, there were nearly 1,300 nominations coming from around the world. And so you imagine how difficult it is to combine uh, all the views from the bureau members into a balanced set of authors with very limited um, spaces available. So how to apply? On the website of the, of the focal point, you can find the information. You'll obviously uh, maybe have seen it in social media. These details are going to be shared. The, the slides will be available. There is an Excel nomination form. It has two pages and um, we request a CV in PDF formats. Please follow exactly the instructions. So complete all the fields in the Excel nomination, produce a CV, which is a maximum of four pages, but I recommend to be as concise and effective as possible so that the information is clear for, for the Bureau as they go through all these nominations. And for the nominations that Italy will submit to the portal of the IPCC, we need to receive your nominations by Friday, 31st of May, uh, by the end of the day. Um, so just to say straight and very clearly, if, if your um, nomination does not follow these uh, instructions or does not clearly follow the, um, should we say, the topics that were identified for the scoping process, then it will not be considered in the process, in the selection process down the road. And um, for, uh, yeah, very important from uh, candidates being nominated by Italy, you must be aware that the participation in these meetings, the costs of participating in these meetings need to be covered by your affiliated institution. So I stop there and um, Thank you for, for being here again, and I really welcome any questions. But before we get to the questions and answers, I'd like to um, hand the floor over to Erika, and then Monica, and then Valentina, and then you can hear from their experience of what the scoping meeting is about. It's quite unique. So I think it, they'll probably share that it's not like any other meeting they attended before. So over to you, maybe Erika. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Anna, and uh, thanks everybody for coming to the webinar. Um, so in addition to what Anna already uh, shared, what I can say is that uh, when you are selected for a scoping meeting, from that point onward, you are really well guided toward the scoping meeting before the meeting starts. So you will start to receive a lot of very detailed information on how to connect to a specific portal through which all the information will be shared with you. So there will be not email going around sending you draft of the program or any other information, but you will be direct to a central point that is a repository where you can access with your um, ID, your username and password, and then everything will be collected on that portal. This is also how in general IPCC works also for the last cycle. And uh, on the portal, they will continuously upload the information to better drive you to the meeting. So some, for example, for the, the city report, we got some uh, video presentation from people that uh, they would like add some preliminary information before. Uh, and it was very useful to listen to this information. Then um, you are um, well informed on any of the development of the program, and then finally at the end the program of the of the scoping meeting will appear on the same place. During the scoping meeting, in the because this was um, a special report scoping meeting, uh, you would find yourself with. Uh, um, with colleagues of very different expertise, in particular for the city report, there were a lot of practitioners and policymakers that were invited to the meeting. Um, so there are very um, different languages besides the 
I mean, the official language is English, but there are different languages that people are going to speak because they come from different backgrounds. Um, so uh, in the beginning, you can you, you can feel a little bit uh, um, like not confused, but maybe um, not really understanding what is going on. It's normal. It takes a little bit of time. Maybe the first day it's needed for that. Uh, the way in which this meeting was organized was to have like the first day a little bit more um, easy compared to the other day. So there were a lot of activity like ice breaking activity, like uh, social um, uh, experiment. Uh, so there was a Red Cross, for example, uh, starting to um, with a, um, with a like survey. Uh, to understand and to let to understand who the participants were and to make us understanding who the other participants were. Then, when the meeting proceeds, as Anna said, there is a very well organized structure. So, you have plenary and box. Um, and this is uh, very important because during the box, most of the people will, will speak. During the plenary, just few voice uh, are always speaking. This is the, dynamical, the, the dynamic of the meeting. Um, so it's really very important that um, you participate to all the bog you think um, are uh, closer to, to your scientific expertise, but also to those one where you are not really uh, feeling comfortable because sometimes they can miss the information that is closer to your expertise. So it's uh, important and also fundamental that um, you navigate across uh, all the possible uh, bogs. Um, the other things I want to say is that uh, the, the meeting are very well focused and they want to achieve the best possible uh, result in the shortest time, that is one week. So you have to uh, really work hard and there are not a lot of um, three hours uh, or free time because uh, if needed, as it was in the special report, uh, the meet, the, there are extra meeting compared to, the, um, to, the, to what is listed in the program. So there are, there are these adults because everything is done with the maximum transparency possible to reach the end a consensus among all the participants and to have an outline that is shared with all the uh, participants. Of course, not everything will be accommodated, but they will be uh, with the consensus of everybody that the that the um, the meeting is ending. One important information is that uh, you have to remember that the bureau member will act as a facil facilitator of the meeting, but they, when there is uh, the plenary session, especially the um, co-chair and the vice chair, are will not be there to take any decision. They will wait for the consensus to come from the audience. And so this is something very important. The problem is not obvious for the for somebody that um, participate to the med this meeting as a first time. And I think I leave the word to Monica or um, to Valentina. <laughs> Thanks, Sadik. I think that you have already uh, summarized all the process. Uh, just to remark that uh, um, uh, the meeting begins with, a, with an opening ceremony, which is uh, rather emotional, and uh, with the, yes, with some keynote speakers. And uh, in, in Riga, we had a, a sort of serious game, which was very. Um, very, very uh, nice and very uh, interesting. And um, uh, we should remember that uh, typically uh, the scoping meeting uh, lasts about four days. The one in Riga took uh, lasted three days and up. So uh, uh, if you plan to attend, if you, you will be selected to attend, you should consider five or six days of traveling abroad. And the working days are very intense. The length of the working day depends on the object to be achieved uh, each day. Uh, that's why, for example, with Erica, uh, several several evenings, we didn't have the time also to go out for dinner after the long day of work because uh, we were, I mean, uh, the day was very long. And in particular, the last day before the final approval, 
and uh, the closing plenary uh, has no no end. I mean, you you go on till evening, till night, until uh, uh, you don't reach um, uh, you don't reach the consensus of 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 the outline. And um, uh, the experience, uh, I mean, is a, I will I really encourage uh, everybody to apply to candidate themselves for this experience because it's very very um, is very um, important. You have the chance um, to meet all the people uh, you are reading uh, papers from because uh, I mean the main uh, leading authors of uh, the scientific literature. Uh, can be found there and um, I really I, I think it's a very beautiful experience I was so lucky to have the chance to share it with another Italian participant Erika and even if we didn't know each other before it was uh, so easy uh, to work together to represent Italy together there and so uh, I think we were also very lucky to to take part in two which which is not a common situation and so um, I mean feel free to ask uh, other question if you think uh, we can uh, we can help you thank you Okay, I don't know. I, there's not much that I can add. The only thing is that uh, the scope of meeting of uh, the the big assessment report are obviously larger. Have you heard, as you've heard? So it's the only chance uh, most of the uh, of us uh, have to meet people from our other working groups. Um, the fact that they are so much larger makes it much harder to you know get to know other people. Uh, I'd say that in group dynamics were more verging towards uh, um, background and capacity uh, or scientific background rather than uh, nationality in my case. So there were various Italians. It was uh, it was uh, a different way we aggregated uh, along a different direction. And uh, the working groups or the breakout groups are very much more important here because uh, there's simply more people. So there's uh, breakout groups of the breakout groups at times or smaller groups or there's classic cut teams that uh, are uh, the most interesting because you get to discuss, for example, about uncertainty with people that are belong to different working groups. So uh, this is also uh, very unique, but I guess uh, it's better to get uh, your questions than keep talking about this. Thank you very much for these experiences. I very uh, apologize. I think my presentation was quite long. Um, if uh, this is becoming too late for you to continue on the call, um, we will provide, as I said, questions and answers and the recording. But if you're able to stay a bit longer, we can still maybe take some more questions. I just want to pick up on something that Monica said, the intensity of the meeting. It is very intense and it doesn't stop until uh, you make it in a way. And that's a bit like what the IPCC work is like. And um, I want to reiterate that this is one part of the process and it will be quite competitive, uh, the selection. Um, but please apply, as uh, Valentina said, we really encourage you to think about participating. Um, after the scoping meeting, there will be the call for authors, and there there are also many opportunities, and we will spend time um, together to discuss all the different ways in which you can contribute to the IPCC. So there is the expert review, and, um, and obviously we can discuss how the assessment um, is based on the available literature. We can talk about that as well in different meetings like this. But at this stage, we, we really hope that the scoping meeting part is, is more clear in case you didn't know it before. And um, yeah, and if anyone would like to take the floor, I think there's the capacity also to raise hand and you can be given the floor. But also we are happy to keep responding in the chat. There's a hand. Yeah, there's a hand. Go ahead, if you're able to unmute.
Lucia, is it possible for you to un yeah, here we go. Yes, uh, I think that now you should hear me. Uh, I have the support of uh, some of you uh, in this uh, chat uh, through my career experience and uh, I really uh, want to thank you because uh, it's uh, what I, uh, I feel like uh, I, I want to do. So um, uh, I see, but, uh, my question is about uh, the timing. So how much I should wait, how, uh, to what extent I should uh, acquire the competence, uh, the competencies necessary to also approach uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, discussions and uh, collaborations as a, a third year PhD student for example, that they have a background in economics and social sciences. Thank you, Lucia, that's a really good question. I can start and maybe others can complement. I think um, the scoping meeting, as others have explained, is, is, uh, it's a, it's a situation in which you're thrown in. And I think some sort of experience at the international level or um, you know, coordinating amongst the community is very helpful. I think um, it uh, is maybe a, an experience that is not necessarily the easiest entry point coming straight from a PhD, but it's simply also because of the, um, shall we say, exposure to the, the, the content that you're working on. That said, um, it doesn't mean that you're not ready to participate because there are many uh, PhD students who have previous uh, backgrounds, they have previous working experience. So I can't say one way or another in your case, if this is the best time to participate. The main uh, thing when you apply is to really indicate that you have um, a broad and kind of established experience that you can transmit to the participants coming from around the world. So it's important to be able to bring your contribution and have a basis on which you can you can make it clear to how important it is for the IPCC report. But I would hand over to um, the others if you'd like to say your own opinion. Yeah, I just want to echo Anna saying that it's really being uh, um, kind of younger researcher, um, you have to be ready to, to, to step in a, a, a region where um there there is no time to um understand there is not a lot of time to understand what they they are talking about so um it's it's really um the process is very 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 fast um but if you think that you are um confident and um, um have a broad expertise for what you do, then um, you should not hesitate to step into this territory. Thanks. Is there anyone else who would like to come in? Domenico. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank nice you, thank you very much. And thank you for the presentation. So uh, my question is, um, uh, if it's possible to apply to just one working group per time, and also if uh, it's necessary or important to indicate uh, experience in uh, UN uh, C processes like uh, participation to COPs or others. Okay, um, so yes, it's possible to participate in just the scoping meeting of one working group. So when you fill the nomination form, you can just identify the themes that are based in that working group. Um, in terms of past experience, I would say participation in the COPs is um, useful because it gives you a broad experience of what the reports are very much targeted towards. So the the UN uh, framework on climate change is certainly one of the main audiences of the IPCC reports. 
So, um, for example, there are uh, those involved supporting negotiation teams or key observers and so on that are intimately involved in the IP in the UNFCCC process. And that is definitely very valuable experience to bring to the IPCC, but also other um, international processes that is certainly very useful background. Again, please others come in, um, Monica, Erika, Valentina, as you think. Well, I think also that uh, the selection process will be based uh, not only on people with uh, a long experience in IPCC, but they will try to, to merge uh, people without uh, any specific experience with the people. I mean, this was uh, uh, what happened with the scoping meeting. So, for example, I was selected, but uh, I didn't have any any previous specific IPCC experience. So I think they need to find, uh, uh, to balance the mix between uh, IPCC expert with a long background with other experts in the field. Because as I said by Erika, during these meetings, there is no time to learn from the other. That's why, for example, in the preparatory materials, they um, send us the uh, re recorded presentation or a presentation by the keynote speaker in order to don't waste time during the meeting. So the meeting is very operating, no time to learn but uh, a lot of time to bring uh, your own contribution to the meeting, to the discussion. Yeah, very good points and good experience to share. I see that Alessandro has uh, his hand up. Yes, hi everybody, sorry I was late. So I don't know if you already answered this question. Um, but is this the first time that the scoping meeting will have all the three working groups together? And what will this imply compared to the previous one? Okay, so I can start and maybe Valentina can complement. So the sixth assessment report um, also had the three working groups together. And um, the intention is, and particularly now in this cycle, building on the lessons of the last report, there is a really strong intention to integrate more and more across the working group silos. So the design of this meeting, we have to see how it will go. In the AR6, we did have the main time was spent in each working group. The majority of the time we were in the working group, very much like the city's experience. Um, it may be that in this meeting, we'll have more cross working group um, structure in the meeting. Yeah, I guess, I guess uh, there are some topics that require that, some topics related to language, uh, uh, uncertainty, scenarios, uh, uh, you know, you could think of a uh, few topics that came out from the last assessment report uh, as boxes uh, within various working groups are as coming up again, cost-benefit analysis, uh, merging two and three, uh, solar radiation management, emerging one and, and three, uh, et cetera. So there, there will be topics that will require, uh, you know, breakout groups that are, require participation of more than one group, working group. Uh, and then it's also, you know, it's very intense, but you can squeeze out some meetings in, um, in breakout groups of other working groups uh, just to understand the way they work. I mean, I think you learn from that to see how, you know, I'm not a climatologist, but uh, I might have gone to very early meetings in the morning to see how they, uh, you know, what what was the, the, the topic and how would they discuss in their breakout groups. Maybe can I add just one point? Um, so um, one information useful to know is that uh, from the interaction with the, um, uh, with the working group one, two, and three uh, co-chair of this cycle, there is uh, a lot, a very strong uh, commitment in the integrating all the working group this time and to create a, a lot of parallel, um, parallel um, kind of uh, interaction, but also 
to decide the, the structure in a way that uh, there is not this uh, clear separation. This is what they say every time that uh, we have invited them to some events to give the overview and the uh, state of the art of the of the of this cycle. Uh, so yeah, I expect that in this uh, scoping meeting they will keep this uh, idea alive and uh, probably whoever would participate will interact a lot with the other working group. Yeah, thanks for the compliments. Sorry, I raised my hand. <laughs> Anyone else would like to come in? And replying as we wait to others in writing. If there aren't any other questions, um, let me check again. I don't think, I think Lucia, this is a legacy hand, but if you'd like to come back in. It's just a very short question and from a point um, of view uh, of uh, females that uh, are in uh, a career path that sometimes uh, it's difficult to um, manage uh, between uh, family and uh, other time, um, other type of uh, commitments. So um, my question is, uh, what was the point for uh, all of you uh, in which you uh, feel uh, expert uh, on that field for make a path and toward IPCC, for example? That to is an amazing question. Um, I don't know uh, if uh, this is a question that is relevant for you or not. Um, maybe not. Uh, I think it's an amazing question. And uh, we are at the end of the webinar. Maybe we can just close with this reflection. Um, I feel very nervous to start. I think the question of when you feel expert enough to participate and engage in the IPCC is a tough question. And I would say I never feel expert enough. But um, one thing that needs to be very clear is that there is a way of participating in the IPCC for every level in your career path. So PhD students, master's students, um, anybody can participate, particularly as an expert, not necessarily as an author, or it's perhaps challenging to be selected for such a meeting, but I don't exclude that happening, of course. Um, as we go forwards, for example, when the drafts start being ready, I will run um, informal meetings like this to um, explain how to participate in the expert review. And, um, and this is the first, I think, very important step Anyway, I would leave the floor to the others and uh, and share their thoughts, you know, hear your ideas. Thanks. Well, I'll try to answer just with a number. So it took me 15 years after my PhD to, to try to submit my application, not for the scoping meeting, but uh, for being an author of the report. And it was last cycle. Um, so, I mean, it really depends on how you feel. Uh, um, I mean, to first of all, which was your career path? If you have been always working in the same field, or if you change many time, or if you if your PhD was uh, or, already uh, the the putting you on the right track, so letting you do the research that. For, for for which you think you are ready now to apply for the IPCC. Um, but it's really, really a personal uh, uh, thing. Um, of course, there is also this family question. So as we all know, being a woman, it, there are some years in which the priority are different. And definitely for the IPCC work, uh, the time commitment is a lot. 
so this is also another reflection that uh, well I was doing during the past year, and only when I when I felt that I could use some of this time for extra, then I decided to submit my application. Monica or Valentina, would you like to? Well, I, I can confirm uh, what Erika said. I, it took to me 23 years after I got my PhD to, to submit my application form. And I also had to wait until my, my, my children became uh, quite uh, old because, uh, as I said by Erika, this is extra work. As I said by Anna, this, this, uh, the travel costs are not paid by, by IPCC, are, are, are paid by our uh, institution. So this is also, I think, a, a very important point. Uh, I could afford uh, coming, uh, going to, to Riga also because uh, I, will, I had some project, I had some funding, and, and that's the first thing, to, to, to cover all the expenses. And uh, so um, I, I mean, I, 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 I will point out that uh, you need the time, you need also uh, some funding to cover your travel experience expenses, and uh, yes, you have to 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 find uh, uh, also extra time uh, or compared to the ordinary work and uh, all the work you do in your family with your children to dedicate to this a new challenge so uh, it's up to you it's your decision but uh, i mean be don't think too much i, I would i would just suggest to try and then uh, and then you you'll decide i just say i don't think you should try i mean i think if you're early you should do other things that are much more fun and useful for your career this doesn't add to your career it's a social, it's a public good that you're giving to others. It's a very nice thing that you should do. But once you have sort of, you know, done everything that you should for yourself, you truly learn something. But uh, when you're, early, it's like writing a book when you're, you, it's not the right uh, step to make when you're very early in your career, for your career, for you. So I don't, I, th I think you should, uh, and, and you one get depressed if one is not accepted. And so, you know, depending where you are, but if you're too early, just wait. It's, it's something that is a pain. It's pain, it's a pain in, in process, painful process where you learn a lot, but it's, it's a lot of effort. So wait, you don't have to give that to us yet. There's a, you know, it, it, it's a public good that you can wait to give to the rest of the world when the time is ripe. Okay, so you've heard uh, various perspectives. I hope that has been interesting and helpful for you. I wanted to pick up a couple of things that I see in the chat. Um, if you are based in a country that is classified, shall we say, as developing country, and the IPCC covers the expenses of your participation in meetings. So the IPCC has a trust fund, and that covers exclusively the participation of experts from developing countries. There are also questions about how to um, nominate. You need to nominate uh, for a scoping meeting through, or to be an author, through a focal point. You can nominate through a national focal point or through focal points that are of observer organizations of the IPCC. And also bureau members can nominate, can include nominations in the process, but this is a more exceptional circumstance. Um, there are other parts of the IPCC where you can self-nominate, and that is in particular the expert review process. I think um, more or less, we maybe have to draw to a close. We have overrun and I apologize, it's probably mainly due to my presentation, but I hope the I've seen some comments that this has been helpful. I really hope this has um, been interesting for you. And um, we will collect all the questions that we have in the chat and we will produce a summary, sort of like a frequently asked questions summary. And you will have the um, recording of the um, webinar. 
I really encourage you to check that you're on the um, newsletter of the Focal Point so that you receive our announcements directly. So this is Focal Point for Italy, of course, and uh, you can follow the IPCC directly through their social media accounts or um, on the website. So they announce everything centrally, obviously. And if you have any questions, there is an email directly to the Italian Focal Point. But I think we can maybe stop there. Oh, we have 10 minutes. We finish it. OK, sorry, I'm confused. I was looking at the wrong hour. We still have time. So um, again, if people have more questions, that makes me feel. Yes, thank you very much. Just another quick question, uh, properly regarding uh, uh, the geography distribution. So. Uh, for the application of the Italian focal point, uh, uh, is important the nationality of the expert or the nationality of the institution? Thank you very much. I would say it's the nationality of the institution. So we have a very diverse and international research community based in Italy. And uh, clearly we want to promote the excellence that is based in Italy into the IPCC process. Thanks, Domenico, for that question. Is there anyone else who'd like to come into the call? Or would any of my colleagues like to add anything? If you have anything that uh, comes to mind, you're welcome to come in before we finish. So I see there are no more questions, and I think we can wrap up then. Um, I just uh, repeat that we will keep having these informal meetings throughout the IPCC process throughout the seventh cycle. Um, whenever there is an opportunity for us to engage with the community in Italy, we will organize an activity, whether it's to um, bring together perspectives, to um, explain how to participate in various aspects of the process, become an author, we will develop information which is indicating the time commitment for becoming an author. And um, other activities can be the re review process, but we can have multiple activities such as these. And you're very welcome to contact us if you have a suggestion. So I really encourage if you feel you have the um, what it what, what is really needed for the scoping meeting, I encourage you to submit your nomination to the focal point email address. I can put up again the relevant slide. I can just find it so you see. But I think you can find all this information on the website of uh, of the focal point. Okay, so it also remind you of the date to send your, your application by. So it must be received in the correct form by Friday 31st of May by midnight. Um, applications received after that will not be processed. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. You can see the email here as well. Sometimes it's a question of finding the information. So if you're not based in Italy, I'm very happy to help direct you to the information. Uh, so feel free to, to contact us. And with that, I really thank you all for joining. I thank uh, Erika and Monica and Valentina and uh, the CMCC communications team for holding the workshop uh, or open hour. And uh, you'll find soon available the recording and the answers to the most frequently asked questions. So have a very Thank nice you. weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.